What's going on guys? We are back with another video today. It is another very cold June day, high and low 50s, water temperatures dropping, so you know it's gonna be a little bit kind of finicky of a bite, but um, what I wanna film today is kind of how you fish a spot for walleyes, especially a bigger spot, right? And uh, you know, a lot of people um, might come up to a spot, fish a small area, not catch anything and move on, right? Or catch a couple fish and go to a new spot and try to replicate that pattern. Well, one thing is for sure, if there's walleyes on a spot, they like that spot. And if it's a big spot, you can likely find several schools of fish on the same spot. So kind of what I'm, this video is gonna be about today, I'm gonna fish one spot. I already know there's some fish up here, at least yesterday there was, and I'm really gonna kind of go through this with a fine tooth comb and try to pick up, you know, every single fish off this spot. Is that gonna happen? No. But am I gonna fish this spot until I get this video done? Yes, I am. And uh, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can find small pods of fish, scattered fish, and there's a number of different ways to catch those fish. I already know I'm gonna have to be fishing a lot of live bait today, a lot of leech kind of stuff. We'll probably mix in some casting, um, some slip bobber fishing, and some trolling if we have to. So we'll see how it goes down. Hopefully this video should be very beneficial on a lot of the kind of finer spots, boat positioning, um, you know, how to catch certain little pods of fish, and then how to catch fish spread out through a large area. So stay tuned, we're gonna mix it up. Let's make it happen. So basically what we're doing here is we're driving around a larger kind of flat here. There's some weeds, there's some rock, there's a little bit of everything here. And somewhere up here we're gonna see a pot of fish. On site imaging, kind of fishing like 10 to 15 feet here. And uh, I got a slip bobber ready to go, I just rigged it up about nine, 10 down, which will kind of work in the depths I'm fishing here. If I do see him up shallow, I'll have to bring it up, but. Basically, we're just kind of cruising here with the big motor looking for fish. I already got my trolling motor down in anticipation for the spot lock here when we do hopefully run into a big pot. And I'm not seeing a ton yet. So this is not pre-planned or scripted. We have not driven through here yet today, so it's just a, we're just looking. We really have no idea. There was some fish up here a few days ago. Assuming somewhere there will still be fish. And this is the stuff we don't put in the video a lot. The just simply driving around looking part of the day. This is an incredibly effective way to do it. You know, you're just running side imaging, looking for fish. You got a slip bobber ready to go. You would just pretty much never see these fish on sonar just because of how shallow and junky the bottom is with rock and weeds. It's not thick rock like where you can't see through it on side imaging. It's just kind of like sparse rock with weeds in it. There's a couple fish off the left. Not really the pod we're looking for right now. It's actually pretty bare, which I'm not a big fan of that but keep putting through it, putting through it. There's a little pot, give me a few more. It's just not enough fish there. Coming up on a little knob here, right where the fish should be. few fish on the back side of this rock. All right, so there's some fish right off my right right now. They're not very far away. So I'm gonna spot lock real quick. We're actually right on a rock line. I'll go ahead and screenshot it so you guys can see it a little bit better. So that bobber should be pretty close to those fish right now. I have not been very successful jig fishing the past week here. So we're just gonna throw out a second slip bobber in anticipation that that is gonna be kind of the deal here. You could go a jig and a leech too, but I'm gonna snap jig a plastic just to kind of see what happens. These fish are not very far away. A lot of times the bite's good, you already got one. Unfortunately, it's just such a big cold front that we're kind of dealing with 
very negative fish for the most part. There's a few fish off the. Okay, we're actually gonna cast the other way here. Some good looking marks kind of like right there. A lot of times you just kind of gotta gauge it, you know. My screen's reading 80 feet side to side, so that's about halfway out. I threw that cast about 40 feet out. And you just gotta have confidence you're right around the fish. So we'll give it a second here. We got two bobbers out. If you're lucky enough to live and fish in Wisconsin, you're allowed three lines. So we're gonna get a, a snap jig bait out here. Like the jerk minnow, something like that. We're actually gonna throw this out here too because I can see that pod real well. We're just gonna let these bobbers work. Jig through the zone here. I kind of expected we would already have the fish, but it just hasn't been a super, super good bite yet, unfortunately. You can be right around them, and it's even kind of tough to get around a lot of fish right now. The way this, this year kind of warmed up, you know, we had this crazy warm up in like late May and into June. And fish were like starting to push out to kind of some of that like 15-ish foot stuff. And uh, there's still some fish up shallow right now, but you see this huge cold front's just kind of scattered stuff all around right now. But some lakes are fishing better than others. This lake, I'm just stubborn with. It hasn't even been fishing that good, but we filmed kind of several videos here in the last week. Another interesting thing is it's just been, it's just been uh, a lot of like males, which is something you see a lot when you get these huge weather changes. Those big fish, their attitude is very susceptible to these mega uh, barometric swings and weather changes. Big fish like long periods of stable weather. That's what makes them happy. That's what makes me happy because you get fish sitting in one place or for a very long time and generally a lot of fish where there is fish. Very surprised I don't have one yet. I can still see a few off my right right now. They're about 50 feet out. I should be kind of close to them with the snap jig here. Might have to kind of re-throw our bobber kind of up here. But this is kind of how it's been the last couple days. You find them, you sit on them, you sit on them, you sit on them. Work to make them bite. But it can't be just crazy good every day. It makes you appreciate the good bites. I got some real close off my right. Work the snap jig real close here. A lot of times when I get close to the boat, I just like to twitch this thing a lot shorter. Oh, do we have something down? Do we have something down? Surely we got something down. And just like that, fish on. <laughs> There's like a decent fish. That was longer than it takes most of the time to get this done. What do we got, what do we got, what do we got? Nice walleye there. <laughs> Very nice walleye. There's a boat driving by, so we're just gonna play this off real professionally for a second. Look at that. Thing's a chunker. That's the quality we want right there. Pretend like we're jigging here. I got the boat going by. I got the boat going by. They don't know. Alright, the boat's gone by. Pick up the pick up the net. There we go. Nice chunker walleye to get things going. That is what I'm talking about. It's been kind of tough to get some of these bigger bites, you know. Oh, I'm angry too. In northern Wisconsin, the 
if you're continually catching fish in that 21 22 inch range and up those are kind of the bigger fish you know a lot of these lakes they seem to have a lot of fish kind of like 20 to 24 and uh going up from there it's relatively slim pickings but if you're on fish like that you're around the bigger ones right it's just kind of catch 20 of these and then end up with a 26 27 a lot of times see you later buddy see you again bobber down fish on does not feel as big that just might not even be a wall except now it got big it's getting bigger this is a small moth what do we got no it is a nice walleye it is a nice walleye same spot actually i got fish just everywhere around me right now i'm gonna reel this bobber because there's so many fish off the right i might have had a bite as i was reeling that in i'm not joking all right sir we got one we got one that's another nice one it's a cookie cutter to the last one about a 21 22. those are the ones we like surly Beautiful walleye there. I gotta keep an eye on this slip bar because I feel like it's just right in a big pot of fish right now. But you can see off my left here, see these little zigs and zags? Like right here, right here. There's all a whole bunch of fish moving through right off my left side. And uh, that's right where this one came out of that school from. So we wanna get this one unhooked and throw right back out there. Looks perfect. Right in the top of the mouth. Never gonna lose them. Look at that, another perfect specimen right there. Beautiful wallet, let's let them go. Cause we got, we got stuff going on here. I don't know if this is going down. Put a little weight on there. I don't just gotta do a bass. No, look at that. <laughs> There's a 15 incher. There's your keeper size fish. You wanna lick him? You wanna lick him? Give him a lick. Not all about it this morning. It's all right. And fish on. Feels kind of bassy, but maybe I was just set too deep. Oh no, it's a nice walleye. <laughs> that bobber wasn't going all the way down. It would go like slack and then it kind of go down a little bit. And a lot of times that's a bass bite or an indication that you're set too deep. And uh, I was probably just set too deep. Because if you're set correctly, a walleye pretty much always buries that slip bobber. So we'll set it a little shallower. Kind of recognizing the little things that ultimately catch you more fish. Obviously you don't want that leaf dragging on bottom or at 10 feet so I should probably set that thing about eight feet down, seven feet down. There's a little bit of fringe weeds down there. And I definitely want to be kind of right above those weeds. What do you think Surly? Yeah, catching them. Catching a few walleyes. It's a 19 incher. Beauty. Let's let them go. Alright well we've been sitting here for like 15 minutes. Right when I got here you know, caught, uh, how many we catch here? The two nicer ones, I guess three nicer ones and a small one. Things that we got. So we got four fish pretty much within five, ten minutes. And uh, I'm not seeing them anymore on side imaging, and I'm also not getting any more bites. So that leads me to believe that there's probably no longer a bunch of fish here. And there was never really a bunch of fish here, but it was kind of a pot of, you know, 10, 12 fish kind of split between the sides of me. And uh, at least that I saw on here, you know, there could be some stuck in the rocks too, but generally a good indicator that it's time to move to a new spot. So you got a couple of options when you're going to a new spot. Number one, obviously 
you, you can just take off and go find something else. Number two, if you're on a larger spot, what you can do is keep cruising around that same spot looking for another pot, which is exactly what we're gonna do, right? Um, it's a lot of kind of the same similar stuff up here. So I'm assuming there's probably two or three more pods of fish in this area, right? And a lot of times, like let's say this is the sweet spot, what I might do is I might just kinda, um, you know, kinda look around and what I'll probably end up seeing is maybe another pod, maybe another two pods where I can spot lock down on, but it might just be kinda scattered fish. And then what I do is I might troll through here or do something that covers a lot more water through this area and try to pick up some of those fish that are just not really locked into a sweet spot. So we're gonna cruise around for now, look for another pod and see if we can get it done. slack out on that one. <laughs> Just kind of moved spots. Got into the next pod here. And lo and behold, there are fish. Here, buddy. Oh my gosh, just a terrible net job. Let me see if they're on the screen right now. Yep. Well, this fish is chilling in the water. Let me kind of show you guys. I'll take a screenshot so you can see it, but Basically what you're looking at is plain sand. There's some weeds off my right side, but those fish off my left are in plain sand. And if you do this enough, you can kind of recognize that that's not the kind of spot where fish are just gonna like sit there, right? Like ideally you always wanna see fish like on something. You wanna see them like on a you know rock edge or on a rock point or on a weed edge or in a weed pocket, something like that. Something that lets you know like, all right, these fish are like holding here, right? A lot of times when you see fish on plain sand on a spot that is surrounded by structure, what happens is you might get like one or two out of it and then those fish just kind of move along, right? There's nothing really holding them there. Or you'll cast out and by the time your bait gets to them, the fish are already gone. There's a little 17 inch fish. We'll let them go. Well, once again, we are back to cruising around looking for more fish. As anticipated, those fish that were just sitting on the sand like that, they did not stick around. I cast it, kind of bomb cast it all around. Did not get another bite. So we're back to looking for another pod. We got a little bit farther we can go on this flat. And then we're seeing a lot of these kind of bundles of like two or three fish. We might try pulling some spinners around so we can kind of clean up on the remainder fish with that. All right, so what I've got here is some fish holding on a rock edge. And I'll blow it up so you can see it a little bit better. You can see some of those faint dashes in there. And uh, there, I'll screenshot it. And uh, those are the fish. They're not very far up the side of the boat. So I went a little bit past them. Now we're hoping they play. It actually didn't go far enough past them, but we're still gonna hope something happens here. They're in about 12, 11 feet of water. Let's try right about there. Actually, just gonna throw both slip bobbers right here. That's pretty much where the fish are. These might be smallmouth. I don't know. So they are all smallmouth. We'll find out pretty quick because the smallmouth are much less intelligent than the walleye. Got a little grub and an eighth ounce here. I'm just gonna pitch around for a second. Hello? Right away. Bobber down, fish on. This is not a smallmouth. <laughs> this is 100% a nice walleye. Up real shallow. That's exactly what we wanted to see. Right there, look at that guy. Come here, buddy. Up. Got him. And that is kind of to a T how I like to work a lot of these spots. You know, it's a lot of kind of, especially these larger spots, go a little way, see what you see. Go a little way, see what you see. On these bigger spots, you can almost always be guaranteed that there's going to be fish on them somewhere. And it's just kind of, and multiple pods of fish a lot of times. You know, it's always nice when we get in that situation where it's like, there's just fish everywhere or all the fish in the spot are on one spot and you can just really do some damage. But a lot of times you gotta work through them a little bit more. There's a nice one right there. 
picking them apart. All right, well, I've kind of exhausted those pods of fish. So there's a couple of different options which you can do next, right? Kind of worked through that whole spot. It was a couple hundred yards, solved a few different pods of fish, caught fish out of a few different pods, and a lot, they just weren't really staying put. And uh, I, you know, some of them I'd pull up, catch two, three of them, and I'd have to move right away. And uh, there's a lot of fish just sitting out in plain sand. So the next thing I'm going to try, the next logical thing, is to do something that covers a lot of water. Snap jigging would be a great thing. Pulling cranks would be a great thing. Although the bite is so finicky that I'm going to have to keep fishing leeches, so I'm going to fish spinner rigs and. Um, uh, leeches on there just with a little quarter ounce weight in front like I previously did in the video and basically how I'm gonna run this spot is I'm gonna connect all the dots where I saw fish right now sure I might pull over one of the spots I do was just fishing and catch one there and I hopefully will catch the fish that are in between those two spots a lot of those rolling pods so that's kind of the next logical cleanup stage of this fishing this spot right is kind of you know raking everything between each spot so that's the next thing we'll see what happens Fish on. Let's slow us down a little bit. Fish came off the corner of the spot we were fishing. Great way to clean up on by doing this. If I stand up here, if I got boats all over, we might just have to sacrifice the spot on this one. Looks like probably a nice walleye. Oh yeah, real baseball actually. Wow. That is the fish of the day right there. It's like every single time you do a video, there's like one very crucial fish. Need video. This is this is the crucial fish. Get out of the nets, really. Oh yeah. That is a good one right there, man. Very good. Exactly what we are after on the cleanup pass. You know, you could just kind of hit one or two of those sweet spots, you call it good. But uh, going back between them, trolling 100% the deal. Let that go. See you later, buddy. All right, guys, well, that is going to kind of do it for today's video. Just to kind of a quick couple little, uh, actually, I've only been out here for an hour and a half, a little rundown on kind of how I like to attack some of these larger spots. Um, you know, don't be the person who pulls up, catches a few fish, and just drives to a different section of the lake, right? If fish are on that piece of big structure, there's probably a lot more of them on that piece of structure. So, you know, mix up the, you got to pretty much mix up presentations. You got to go from casting, you know, to maybe still fishing, to trolling, and, you know, you can really clean up on a lot of these larger spots and have a really good day instead of just catching two three fish here two fish over here one over here you know you can basically put big strings of fish together but cleaning up the scraps through some of these larger spots so hopefully this video was beneficial for you guys um, it's finally starting to warm up and become a nice day I don't know if I have to edit the rest of the day so I'm not up till 2 a.m. again or if I get to go fishing and film some more stuff the rest of the day but we'll see I appreciate you guys watching if you're not yet please subscribe and stay tuned for more content